What is up guys, it's Seesaw here, and yes, I know, it's uh, it's been a while, no excuses, but TLDR, got a new job, moved back to my hometown of Los Angeles, and just generally have a lot more free time, so expect a lot more crude content, crude events, um, join my server below, we're doing a bunch of Christmas events, thousands of gems and giveaways in the next month or so, uh, events for the new edition drop in January, and yeah, join below if you want to join the community and keep in touch, and yeah, let's talk about the dojo. Karuda just came out with its biggest gameplay update. I'd argue it's bigger than the affection system, um, where players can make cards a fighter. Um, every card in the collection can be a fighter, um, and by going into dojos, trainings, upgrading them, you can build them the way that you want. Um, now, before I want to dive into the before I dive into the dojo system, I really want to just give a little bit more about my initial thoughts about the system. Um, it's interesting because I feel like Craig has always been. Um, kind of against this fighting mechanic in any RPG, rock, paper, scissor type of um, system to exist in Karuda. Um, and all we need to do is really just go to the state of Karuda 9. And he talks a little bit more about this in depth. Right here, Craig just prioritizes two different things, right? Collecting and trading cards. Um, and he says right here that he's seeing a lot more other bots pivot towards these battle system and RPG systems and that this isn't our approach. So. I think when I when I heard about this, it was really interesting because I just never expected kind of this battle mechanic to exist within Karuda. Um, and now I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I, I you know I think it's great. It's very enjoyable for me so far, and I think it's going to be good for the game. Um, but I think I just wonder whether or not priorities have changed within um, Karuda. Um, he you know he's justified. Uh, the release of dojo with having it be kind of personality based with the cards um, and you need to recognize what cards do and kind of their anime personality um, and it's true it's true it, it matters a lot for the dojo system but at its core dojo is a battle mechanic it's a fighting mechanic it's something that he's historically said that he was against but now released and so i wonder if he's you know more willing to explore other avenues in Karuda than you know maybe more so than we thought to maybe mo make it more of a mainstream game or or have other mechanics and avenues for the game that we didn't expect to happen in the future um now with the dojo system, I think the thing that I'm most excited for, for sure, is definitely the release of this rank system and competitive system. If we scroll down here, um, there's going to be seasonal rank systems where players, I, I assume, can have unlock the highest rank, whether that be a challenger or a diamond like in League or Valorant, um, where we can earn rewards and have a competitive ladder. Um, I don't know about you guys, but having a competitive system and having that experience is really what gets me going, especially in other games as well. Um, this is something I'm super stoked and excited about. Um, it drives so much more engagement for the game, and I can only imagine how much more currency, how much more time and effort um, that the highest ranked players are going to have to put in order to release that or achieve that status. And so um, I really like that. I'm really excited for seasonal ranked rewards and having that competitive um, mode kind of released. Um, and I've always said, um, you know, even before the affection system, that players just needed something to do in Karuda besides just dropping and training between players. Um, something where people can improve their collection, their inventory, or, or whatnot in some way um, in between that. And, and, and yes, the game has always meant to be and, and was built to be, to be something that you played in between queues, um, between Genshin and Valorant. But, you know, at its core, there's always going to be a subset of people that are willing to spend more time uh, and willing to spend a lot more. Um, effort in Karuda and that should be rewarded and I think with this release of the dojo system that captures that um, you know kind of perfectly so getting back to the dojo right now there's only two kind of options available for for the dojo right now it's gonna be a dummy practice where you can practice fighting with your fighter and it kind of a, a practice dummy without any repercussions or costs um, or training where you can pay 100 gold to play against AI to gain experience um, there's also a showdown option and let me just pull this up so it's it's, it's helpful for um, for you guys to see what's available right now. Um, so right now there's training, there's a practice option where you can access in a different menu. Um, there's competition, which we talked about earlier, You're going to have competition within um, the, the players themselves, have the players fight against themselves, which is really, really cool. Um, and this showdown option, which I spoken to Craig about earlier, um, it's gonna be something shorter term, so think weekly or daily, um, where all players face kind of the same set or, or kind of track of opponents. The goal is to be kind of using these perks and kind of your collection of characters um, 
that is best suited to kind of defeat the enemy team and, and enemy set of opponents, right? Um, it's going to be more of a deck building mode where you can select perks and rewards are going to revolve around kind of scrolls and and, and, and kind of more dojo uh, exclusive rewards. Um, of course, all this information isn't final. Don't take, take it with a grain of salt. Um, and I'm sure they're working on a lot more things to kind of make sure that this is the avenue that they want to go into. Um, now, onto the dojo itself. Um, if you guys have ever played Slate the Spire, uh, a game on Steam, it's a great game by the way. Um, it reminds me of exactly kind of what it is. It's a card based or, or perk based system where, um, you know, there's turns, there's blocking, attacking, debuff, statuses and all that. Um, I think if you've played the game before or Slate the Spire, you'll have a much better understanding um, of kind of what this mechanic and the fundamentals of the new dojo system is going to be like. Um, as a gist, you basically draw a list of perks or cards that you that you have. Each perk has a different kind of cost for energy and you gain a certain amount of energy each turn. Um, and you play the perks that you have that will have different effects like attacking or blocking um, to the enemy character and the first character, either you or them, um, whichever one dips below zero health first is going to lose that fight. Now, how do you first start playing the dojo? What you need to do is kind of register a fighter first. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pick a random character from my collection. In this case, I'm gonna pick Tanjiro. Um, haven't registered him yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and register Tanjiro. The command is KFI or K Fighter Info in the card code. And right here, um, you'll notice that it gives you a technique dropdown. Um, so there's different techniques in the game and techniques are basically like classes, right? So there's five different classes in the game right now. Um, each class has its own ener unique energy system, which is kind of the resource that we were talking about earlier, where you play, play different cards, require different amounts of energy. And so each kind of class gives you a different kind of um, vibe and different set of uh, ways to gain that energy. Um, the default technique and the only one that is free to use is called Spirit which Craig claims to kind of be among the strongest in most situations. Um, it's pretty simple, so I'm going to go ahead and select Spirit. Bada bing, bada boom, it costs one ticket to register and your card is now registered for Dojo Infinitely. Now going back into kind of the techniques, I'm just going to go ahead and walk through the kind of different techniques that are listed here um, that are available. So like I said, the Spirit technique right here is a default technique. Um, and it doesn't cost anything to use. Uh, I don't have any scrolls to kind of use and activate these yet. Um, and so I can't show you personally, but just walking through this will be kind of helpful. So for spirit, you can see here how it's used. Um, there's a maximum of eight spirit and the gain here is outlined pretty, pretty clearly. So it's a lot easier for beginners to play with the spirit, know how much spirit you're gaining each round, know what the maximum is going to be. Um, and it's, it's the default mode. So next is balance, which is a technique that revolves more cost, um, you know, zero cost cards and zero cost play cells um, because the max bounce one is here you have to be very careful unlike spirit where you have a max of eight you're only getting one balance each turn because your max is only one so it really revolves around zero cost to increase that balance by one you get an additional balance at the end of the uh, every time you use um, kind of that zero cost skill um, and so you revolve around you know chain and comboing you know different zero cost skills to kind of uh, maximize your synergy there for balance um, next is endurance which is more of an uh, an early game kind of technique. Um, you start off with three endurance with a maximum of three. So unlike spirit where you're gaining only one and two, you know, the first couple of rounds, endurance, you're starting off with that three. Um, so, you know, you're packing an early punch. You have a really good early early game advantage, but later on when, you know, when Spirit has a max of eight and they're pulling out these five cost perks, these four cost perks, that obviously would do a lot more. They have a lot more stats debuffs. They're just stronger and at a whole. Endurance isn't really gonna be able to kind of keep up with that. And so um, you really have to build your deck and play style in a way that suits these early game two or three cost cards, you know, make sure you wipe them out or whittle them down by the time that, you know, round four or five comes up where spirit has a five max and you're going to be at a disadvantage. Um, next is mimicry, which requires a lot more thought to, to kind of use. Um, I think it's safe to say that, you know, in most different cases, you know, you're using up most of your energy and perks that, you know, you have, unless you're saving up for a different perk that in your deck that's higher cost and you think you're gonna draw it next turn. Uh, for Mimicry, you really have to spend the same amount of energy as you did in the previous turn to kind of increase the maximum. Um, so a lot more thinking, I'm a little bit more unsure about this one. Obviously all these things, I, we're gonna see a lot more guides, a lot more people, you know, experimenting and building out the right ways to play this, but just explain this right now, you should be somewhat good about thinking and so strategizing what goes into your deck in terms of cost level. Um, you should be good at math <laughs> to kind of add up, you know, what you're using and stuff. Um, but a bunch of potential here. And lastly is rage all the way at the bottom. 
Um, it's a technique where it scales more about which, uh, how much damage you take and, and receive and all that. So a lot more momentum based. So that's kind of the list of five per, uh, techniques that are out right now. And you need scrolls to use them. Um, scrolls have already came out in, in prior months, but I, I'm hoping that they come out for monthly rewards in the next couple of months, as well as exclusive dojo kind of uh, rewards here. So like I said, once you register a fighter, you can bring up their fighting window. Um, and with the command KFI, it pulls up this new window with a bunch of different with a bunch of different actions here. Um, clicking into the perks, and this is very important, clicking into the perks shows all the different perks that you're going to get up to a maximum level of, uh, of 100. Um, after level one, every five levels, you are presented with an option of three different perks that you can choose, and you can choose one of them. Um, and so that's how you kind of build out your deck or perk list to be, to be, to be frank. Um, attributes are also really, really important. Whenever you re-roll or register a fighter, all 22 sets of perks up to level 100, or basically all 22 sets of perks, are randomly rolled. But there is a lean and a constraint um, into what you roll based on the character's kind of attributes. And these affinities and traits really define what perks you, that you get, right? Um, and they're dependent on the personality of the character. And this is where kind of knowing the card comes into play, knowing the anime comes into play. Um, you can think of body as more of the aggressive affinity, soul as more of kind of like the healing and the uh, cleansing kind of affinity, and then mind more of that status debuffing kind of affinity. Um, so just, just to give out examples, for example, uh, like a Naruto, right? Uh, really aggressive in the show, a fighter. Um, someone like that will obviously in turn have a higher body trait. Um, and same with Kama, uh, Tanjiro, right? Like you see here, like he, he's a big fighter in the, in the show. Um, he has a higher body trait. Um, and uh, obviously that comes with a lot more aggressive perks, a lot more damage perks. But if you look at different characters, like an L from, uh, from Death Note, like his personality in the anime is a lot more intelligence-based, outwitting, outsmarting people. Um, and he's really smart, right? So um, obviously his mind trait or affinity is going to be a lot higher, his soul probably a lot higher, and his body is probably going to be a lot lower than someone like a Tanjiro or a Naruto. And so based on which affinity um, is higher and the character traits, you're more likely to roll those perks that really fit that uh, affinity, right? So you can expect a Naruto to be mo a lot more hard hitting, have a lot more damage, doing a lot more damage than someone like an L who has a high mind um, is going to be doing a lot more healing, cleansing and, and all that. So um, yeah, it's really important to look at the affinity and kind of character personality when you choose what fighter and build you want to go for. Um, stats are just stats, um, nothing much here. Um, actions pulls you up to this window, and it's, it's really important, really important, these two things, right? Rebirthing, it resets your experience, level, and ascension. So it basically resets the entire character, resets the entire fighter. Um, it re-rolls your perks and attributes, though, which is really, really important, right? Um, so if you want your specific character to be perfect, you want a specific playstyle or build that you're going for, and you see in your perk list that you don't have everything or all the perks that you want, let's say you want like a... You know, it, let's say you want like a barrage or something or a specific perk for your character and you don't have it and, um, you know, you don't want to invest into it and, and get into perks that you don't have or, or you, that, you, that you don't want, then you should rebirth and, and you know, re-roll the character before even investing more money into it. It costs 30 damage dust, which is dust, which is kind of expensive, but I'm also happy because this makes it um, a lot more valuable damage dust. Um, <laughs> Ascending is only available at level 100, um, and it resets the character's experience and level. Um, but what it does is it lets you re-roll that character's perk uh, kind of set from their perk list. So let's say um, for level 10, you know you want um, instead of a sense of or level 15. Um, you see protect, restore, and defend. These are all kind of like blocking or, or healing kind of mechanics. And let's say you want something that's more power, um, then you can go ahead and select that. It'll re-roll that perk list for you to get, hopefully get you something that you want, right? And so you can see how ascending, you can you know build on your character. Every time you ascend, you're improving your perk list. You're improving your, your entire perk set. And at the end of the day, you're gonna come up and come out with 95 levels of perks that are perfect and have the perfect build for your character and be really, really strong. Um, but you can see how kind of currency draining, um, intensive, investment heavy it really is to kind of build the perfect character, um, which is great for the game, by the way, a lot of investment, a lot of engagement. Um, and because you have kind of this visibility of all the perks and stuff, um, you can really choose what you do and what is ideal for the next steps, right? Um, for example, if you know you want to have a power build where you 
um, take perks that increase power um, while having, you know, setting up a prowl for tri cut where, you know, you get a hit three times in one card or a double cut um, and having less synergy there. Uh, if you don't see both of them and you're running that, right, and you have a power character or a body character, and then, like, yeah, re roll um, until you get something that, you know, uh, that a perk list that you want. It, it's really important to recognize that you don't invest too much in a character that is, isn't really having that perk list that you want. So once you have your character registered as a fighter, you can go ahead and press K Dojo to pull up the dojo uh, menu. Here you can select a team. I already have a team selected, but I'm going to kind of select a second team and add in my, my Tanjiro code. I'm going to go ahead and, and put it here in the card code section. It puts uh, Tanjiro as kind of that section A. And your team is really, really important, right? You have to decide which character you send out to battle based on what you think the attributes or what you know the attributes of your opponent is having. Um, you know, and how that build is going to be structured and how your build is structured and pit your best fighters against their best fighters. Um, you know, for example, let's say you're going against someone that has or is soul, right? It probably has a lot of debuffs. Um, you know, we should run a mind character that has a cleanse ability and healing abilities, right? So it's important to have a variety of different characters in your team to kind of really combat different instances that you're going to face um, when you go into the dojo. Be prepared for the things that can happen to to the team and, and, and you know, be prepared for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set uh, random characters as well. So Casey or Effer, um, I think, I don't know which ones I've registered. I'll just register this one. And let's register Aqua as well. Um, one thing to note is that even though you send out one fighter, um, all three of your characters actually get um, all three of your characters actually get that experience from fighting. So once you enter the dojo, you should fight here or training here. So this is the only mode that's available. You spend 100 gold. Um, you have a dojo training round, right? Technique, it shows spirit. Okay, it's kind of that neutral technique. Um, and the level is based on what level the, uh, the fighter you choose. For example, if I choose my Shoko, who's already level 10, then the level of the opponent is going to be 10. If I choose my Tanjiro, who's level 1, then the level of the opponent is going to be 1, right? Um, so when you fight here, you get pulled into this menu. There's a little kind of this listing um, where it shows that you can act, right? So you can select a skill um, right here. There's a selection of skills. So I'm gonna you can you can see um, double cut, punch, rejuvenate, and block. So right now you only have one energy. So go ahead and play things that only have no cost, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and punch, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and double cut because I know this deck doesn't have any one cost cards. I know we just activated it, so. I'm going to go ahead and end turn because there's nothing to block. So um, it passes it on to them. Um, so when they get uh, their next prompt, they can use block to block the damage, um, which mitigates kind of that portion of the damage, right? So he blocked three damage, um, which mitigates that. So at the end of the day, I've only done two damage, even though um, when I ended my turn, it, it seemed like I did eight damage, but they have kind of that response there, right? So um, now it's our turn. Uh, we can go ahead and see that okay, so they're doing four damage to us right now So what's important for us? Is it going to be important to block that damage? Is it going to be important to you know punch them and do damage? Um, so right now you can see that you know, we only have three options So I'm gonna go ahead and triple burst him as well as punch and Then block one time. So I only take one damage at the end of the day. So go ahead to the next turn and um, You can see what he does. He blocked a couple of those damages and then he punched uh, us as well. So i um, gonna rejuvenate to get some vigor, um, which is basically status effects that is really, really important. Um, status effects, um, I didn't really explain too much into this, but you can click on what they do, and it's a lot um, of different, I think there's like um, dozens of status effects that you, can, uh, that you can do, but basically vigor basically allows your energy to increase a lot more. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and play block as well and play um, a punch. And you basically repeat this until one of you guys goes under zero health. So block twice to mitigate some of that damage. See what he does. Gonna double cut as well as punch. Rejuvenate here just really doesn't do anything. Um, you can see how like cards themselves don't really have uh, too much of an effect um, if you know there's nothing to synergize with them, right? So like if I have eight energy, um, it doesn't really matter because the cards in my deck aren't high cost because I'm level one. So you have to kind of build your deck around that. So I'm gonna go ahead and block, block, and punch, um, punch, block, block again. Not playing rejuvenate. 
um, because it doesn't really matter. We don't need that vigor. Uh, punch. I'm gonna double cut. I'm gonna go for the kill here. So he's at one health and punch. So he's gonna be really, really low and he has to block in order not to pass away. And so he now you can see that he only blocked three, which is perfect because we were negative three and that brought him up to zero, but that's not enough. So we won the battle and everyone gets uh, kind of experience points here. Tanjiro gets the most because as a fighter, you're getting the most points or EXP points and the other two members of your team um, get a little bit, but not the rest. And you can see that um, if you retire, you basically end or leave with the rewards that you got, but you can um, keep fighting and increase the number of rewards that you get with the same amount of gold. But if you pass away or you, if you get injured um, before retiring, then you lose all the rewards you get. So it's really a balance of whether or not you think your cards are good enough to beat round two, which is going to be a higher level fighter, right? So I'm level one, but the fighter is going to be level four. So it increases every round. Um, so you have to really, really kind of gauge and see whether or not it's worth it for you to keep going or just walk away with the rewards. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the combat mechanic in a nutshell. One thing I will note is that the, the perks that you draw are kind of based out of this pool of perks that you have. So level one, you pick all three perks or you have all three perks. You have a default attack and a default block. Um, and then as you add perks, when you get level five, you add a perk. At level 10, you add a perk. It adds into that pool where you can draw the perks from. Um, right now, there's a you know there's not a way you can kind of remove a default block or punch like Slay the Spire. It's always just gonna be there in, in that. So we're gonna go ahead and retire. Um, cause I don't really want to, you know, do another one. So, um, yeah, you confirm retirement, Shoko gain one level and Tanjiro gain that experience. Um, and when you KFI again, so let's KFI the Tanjiro and you can see that his experience bar went up a little bit. And if you pro play him again, get 50 XP, he levels up and he's level two. And once you get to level five, you can activate your perk. So that's a combat, you know, mechanic in a nutshell. One thing to note is that um, if you get injured, your character is injured for 24 hours. So not as drastic as if you were get injured um, when working. One additional item that was released was a salve, which you can buy from K Ticket Shop. And you can see here that you can buy a salve, which reduces the injury by 24 hours. So K buy, let's say like two salves. Um, and go ahead and KU's salve on your character card if he's injured. Um, so that's a way you can keep going and prevent um, you know any stalls in your in your progression if you're um, if you're getting injured often. So a couple of tips I want to talk about the dojo, just really general high level tips I wanted I wanted to talk about. One, there is a ton to think about in terms of picking the character and fighter that you want to use. Um, so before even registering a character, really think about the build um, that you want to go for. If it's a power build, if it's a body build, mind, soul, or whatnot, um, you should be thoughtful in the characters that you pick based on their personality, um, and then rebirthing a bunch before you even you know train with them or fight with them or invest with them um, to get a, a, a really good perk list that you're you're, you're aiming for. Um, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to get every perk list. You're not going to get a perk that you want um, but if you get a good amount of perks that you want then you can play with that and ascend with that and build a good fighter but you can see how expensive it is right like a hundred gold got half a level right can you imagine like 20,000 gold 10,000 gold to get to level 100 to ascend one time um, you know the amount of stalls that you have to go through when you get injured um, when you're you know when you're when you're doing that it costs a lot over the long term so you should really think about what to invest in the second tip is to balance your deck, right? Um, you know, it's not always good, and I'm talking about spirit here. Obviously, there's a lot of nuances when you go to different techniques, but it's not always good to have a bunch of low-cost cards it's because at the end of the day, when you reach, um, you know, round five or six or seven, when, you're, when your energy is like at a max of eight and their opponent is playing five-cost cards are obviously a lot stronger, they do a lot more damage or block a lot more, they put a lot more status effects on you, but you have all these one-cost or zero-cost cards that are just doing five damage or, or inflicting confusion or or blocking for four you're gonna lose in the long run so you should balance out your deck with um, a good amount of perks within the early game mid game and late game of your battle um, i say a good rule of thumb um, something like you know a hearthstone right it's the same same thing as a hearthstone uh, you should have around 60 percent of your perks around that zero to three range so having a good amount of early game aggression and then you know a couple of four cost perks and then five plus your late game per perks makes up the rest of the 20 25 percent of perks that you have and lastly, I will say you really, really should learn, spend the time learning every kind of status and, and most of the perks that are in the game. And I say this because it becomes a lot harder to play the game when you don't know what a status does or what kind of um, mechanics are behind a chain or mechanics are kind of confusion. Like, okay, confusion is only 25% of the time you'll attack yourself or uh, versus attack him. If you're both low health 
and you know he's going to beat you next turn, then you should really attack if you're confused. Um, and, and you wouldn't have known that if you, you know, if you didn't know the perks. So go through the list. There's a website, a glossary online in Karuda. I'll link it down below. But go through, study the list, study the attributes, um, study everything about the system, and it'll make you know the long run for the dojo um, gameplay for you a lot more pleasant, a lot more easy to kind of advance. And lastly, I just want to talk about impacts on economy again, and this is my favorite part, right? Like the market and how it's going to impact that. Um, it's going to be huge, and it's going to be it's it's it's, it's ugh, the largest gameplay update. Right? It's it's going to be huge for the economy. First of all, I want to say fighters are going to be tradable, right? So this is going to be the same thing as workers, um, where they retain their perks and retain their affinities or whatnot. Everything and levels, um, it retains when they trade. So it's going to be intact when you trade those characters to another person, which opens up a new whole new facet of kind of um, a, a crude economy and crude trading, right? Like. I can imagine you tra uh, channels for Karuda fighters, you know, best fighters, you know, demanding a thousand plus tickets, you know, and, and we can see with the future of the dojo, if you go to Karuda Hub here in the announcements, um, you know, there's going to be exclusive rewards tied to the dojo. Um, there's going to be a player run service related to the dojo. So think about trim or think about trims for Koi Bitos or, 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 you know, stuff like that. You know, it's going to be huge, like sketching, right? So a whole new economy, a whole new facet of the economy. Um, and, you know, I can only imagine like a perfectly combination um, or built fighter. Um, level 100, you know, every perk perfect for that fighter going to be selling for a lot because it's going to be really, really rare and, and going to require a lot of investment. So people would rather kind of buy that. Um, and one last thing I'll say is that it's going to eat up currency. And this is my favorite part because um, throughout the past year, currency has become less valuable, right? Like bits you before, like a year ago, um, eight months ago, you saw them selling at like 600 for one ticket, 700 for one ticket. Now it's like 1.5K plus bits per ticket. Um, same for gold. Like there's just so much more currency in the game um, that it's a lot more it's a lot less valuable to the game and when you see here you know like rebirthing costing 30 damage dust um ascensions costing gold and and and, and tickets and gems um training dojos costing gold and whatever mechanic or gameplay update they add to dojo requiring more of that currency like we can see the existing currency that we have becoming more and more valuable and thus driving a like a lot more healthy economy and everything trickles down everything relates to each other so this will impact die jobs will uh, impact droplets uh, uh you know impact a lot more things in the game and it, it builds for a lot healthier economy um which is why i'm so incredibly excited for for the dojo and how that's going to affect that um but yeah let me know if you have any questions i hope this helped a lot obviously didn't go in depth about all the perks and perfect builds and all that but just want to provide a high level overview of uh, the game itself and the mechanic itself and obviously I think as we play this and the community plays this um, there's going to be a lot more information that comes out and I'll make a video on it soon um, but yeah if you enjoyed it please subscribe and like down below and let's uh, let's get it let's let's, let's let's build on dojo let's have fun and I'll see you guys in the next one thanks bye